can change the world And I believe Change begins with you and me Marion Wright Edelman, who was chair of this Children's Defense Fund said once, I'm not going to quote her exactly, but something about we must remember our forebears and those on whose shoulders we stand. Frank Kameny's shoulders are one of those sets that we must pay homage to. I would like everybody to rise and acknowledge Frank Kameny. At the age of 84, my shoulders don't have quite the ability to bear any much anymore, <laughs> not as much as in the past. Uh, as was indicated, I could easily enough go on uh, on related matters at enormous length, but except for one introductory anecdotal matter, I'm going to stick to our major topic here, which is the military gay ban. Um, but before that, just as an indication of where things have gone over the uh, somewhat more than half a century that I've been involved in all of this, uh, I got pulled into the whole gay movement or the creation of it back in 1957 when I was fired by the government because I was gay. At that point, there was a civil service gay ban, which was fully as rigorously enforced and quite as ferociously enforced as the present military gay ban. Um, I fought that all the way up to the Supreme Court, and in the course of that, I did file an administrative appeal with the chairman of the then Civil Service Commission, which ex still exists with a new name. It's now the Office of Personnel Management. And uh, that appeal uh, as often happens with bureaucratic pr uh, procedures, uh, sort of hung fire. Well, the Civil Service Commission, the OPM, uh, the, the Civil Service Commission was the firing gays then, now has as its director or its chairman an openly gay man. <laughs> By the bureaucracy, as it often does, mulled over my appeal for 52 years. <laughs> and two months ago, I received a beautiful letter from the chairman of the OPM, apologizing for the shameful, that was his word, action of the Civil Service Commission of 1957 in firing me. In the interim, as a personal project, it took me 18 years, I got them to reverse their anti-gay policy, but this was a sort of an extended, almost storybook ending to the whole protest. Now, back to the topic for today. Uh, we're here today, hopefully, to see the final stages of the reversal of one of the more disgraceful episodes in our country's long history. The military gay ban, which is now unfortunately a matter of statute, so the president can't reverse it unilaterally the way Truman was able to reverse uh, racial discrimination in 1948 when it was merely policy, goes back a lot farther <coughs> than most people realize. Uh, if you go back into history, you find that on March 10th, 1778, in Valley Forge, George Washington conducted the court-martial of, I think it was Captain 
uh, Frederick uh, got hold insulin <coughs> for being gay. And on March 14th, he was drummed out. I did things literally then. He was literally drummed out of the service in disgrace uh, for being gay. So the policy goes way back. I personally ran into it when I enlisted in the Army on May 18, 1943, three days before my 18th birthday, at the height of World War II. They asked, just as now. I didn't tell. Although I was a vigorous, healthy teenager, there were things to tell. <laughs> <laughs> I served, I saw combat in Europe, and I'm proud of my military service, but I have resented for 66 years that I had to lie to my government in order to serve in a war effort, which I very, very strongly supported, as everybody did for that particular one. Well, things have moved since then. Uh, Randy Wicker indicated some of the specific effort directed against that policy uh, began to move in 1963. In 1960, uh, 1964. In uh, 1965, we had a whole series of picketing demonstrations. That was the very, very beginning of the 60s. And at that point, things hadn't really advanced to what they became by 68, 69, and 70. And picketing uh, in front of government buildings was the mode of expression of dissent par excellence as of that point. And uh, we picked it at the White House and a number of other places, including the Pentagon, uh, to protest uh, anti-gay policies of a whole variety of sorts. Um, in, those, uh, in those days, uh, the movement was very, very tiny. Um, on the East Coast, we had the magnificent number of organizations, four. Uh, the whole gay movement for the whole country was five or six gay groups. So it was small. Those of us who were in things did everything. Uh, we didn't have specialized groups like SLDN and the Human Rights Campaign and uh, uh, Lambda, Illegal, and all of that. The few of us that were in the movement were it. And uh, at the administrative level, I'm not a lawyer, uh, I handled large numbers of civil service cases, uh, security clearance cases, military cases, uh, uh, from local people and people all over the country. We had the draft then. And, uh, uh, people were being excluded from draft who wanted to go in. Uh, people were being uh, forced in on claims they were lying about being gay to stay out. <laughs> and uh, so it worked both ways. I handled a number of those. Uh, I was beginning to get into, um, as was mentioned, uh, uh, public lecturing and so on, writing articles. One of them appeared in the Air Force Times. Lenny, you've heard the whole story a few moments ago. Lenny Matlovitz saw it, things moved ahead, and uh, he ended up on the front cover of Time Magazine in 1975. Uh, we, had whole, we had high hope that that case might reverse the policy. At that point, it was still policy, not law yet, uh, but uh, it didn't. Uh, but w what was happening was a gradual softening. Back when I, back in the uh, uh, 40s when I got in and on for a number of years, if you were known to be gay, you got um, a dishonorable discharge and sometimes incarceration. Bit by bit that softened. It became an undesirable discharge. And then a general, di uh, and then a general discharge under honorable conditions. And it moved up step by step to what it is now. You're still thrown out but at least it's with an honorable discharge. And you don't end up uh, uh, in uh, prison for five years or, or 10 years or whatever. 
Um, so that has changed gradually, but um, uh, we continue to push uh, uh, the, the cases uh, came on. The draft, of course, ended about 73 or 74, and uh, that uh, uh, took some of the pressure off, but we still had people in the service. We, uh, uh, there was a tail end of Vietnam at that point. Um, uh, there were the present uh, uh, war efforts going on, and uh, the policy is still there. Uh, it, uh, there would not have been uh, much use prior to this year uh, in getting uh, the law changed uh, because it's probable that uh, the past administration would have vetoed it. But uh, there's a commitment now um, from uh, President Obama that if we get the law to him, or the bill to him, he will sign it. So. Uh, 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 Representative Murphy from uh, Pennsylvania is pushing very hard on this. I'm delighted to see that. And uh, I was a little bit uh, concerned when Representative Tauscher resigned. I've been in touch with uh, people there. I sent in a long memorandum as to what they should do about the uh, Article 125 sodomy of the UCMJ, which must be uh, reversed as well. Uh, uh, along with the actual uh, reversal of the, of the uh, exclusion. And uh, so I've been in touch with them. Things are moving forward. Uh, they feel they've got to deal a little bit carefully with the military people. You have a whole generation gap, which has much been talked about. You have your, your older officers. There was this letter um, elicited by... Uh, uh, the abominable Elaine Donnelly uh, <laughs> uh, of the, what is the Committee for Military Readiness or whatever she calls it, uh, 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 opposing the change. So they have to deal with the military in a realistic um, political kind of a sense. But uh, I would foresee within, uh, within the next year at the most uh, that the bill will go through there up to, I think it's 176 co-sponsors, such a number as such a number as that. So they're getting up there, and uh, uh, hopefully we will get it through, get the thing done, and get it done uh, fairly soon. Uh, I don't know how much longer I'll be ar around, but I hope I'll be around at least that much longer anyhow. <laughs> Thank you very much. When I was in the military, they gave me a medal for killing two men and a discharge for loving one. And I